How's it going everyone? Welcome back to another fighting game lecture. In this lecture, we're going to be adding our first attack. So if we go into our attack trigger state, let's double click on our include here, you'll see that we have set up all of our attacks. We have our normal attack and then our combos for both the gamepad and the keyboard. And what I want our normal attack to be is the one that's not timed. It's the one that when we hold down the right trigger, it's always going to work. And that's the big difference between the combos because these are timed. You have to hit it at the right time for this to trigger. So what I want to do is I want to set this up. Now to do this, we need to give it its own state. So let's right click on our states folder and let's call this normal attack state. And now I want to call it normal attack state just because that's what we called it in our groups. So let's go to our game event here and let's rename these things because these are kind of uh, confusing and I don't want them to be. So attack one anims is going to become normal attack anims and hit tab a few times and I'm going to call this normal attack anims animations. And attack two anims is going to now become combo one anims and I'm just going to rename that number to combo one. Then I'm going to copy and paste this and call this combo two anims. So that way we just have this hopefully a lot more clear uh, than it was and hopefully you can understand what we're going to do and if not we're about to do it so now you should understand. So now that we have this variable what it's going to do is control our animation frame. So let's go to our entities player object player and let's look at our ID attack. Let's actually rename our ID attack to become ID normal attack. Oops. There we go, underscore attack, ID underscore normal underscore attack. So now we have our ID normal attack here and it's got four frames of animation, zero, one, two, and three. There we go. So those are our four frames. And here's what we're going to do. So we're gonna to go to our normal attack state and now we need a check, we need a start. So if we go to our trigger state real fast, let's look here. Our trigger to see if this animation will play is going to be by setting attacking to true, which we made last time in our player's instance variables. So this is going to be, are we normal attacking, are we combo attacking, or are we combo two attacking? So what we're going to do is we need to check to see if attacking is true. So let's go to our normal attack state. Let's add the event to our player. And let's is boolean variable set attacking, just like that. That's right there. That event is saying, is attacking true? If it is, what's going to happen? Now we have our animation state here, which takes from our player state. Now we could set our player state here and we might do that, but for right now, I wanna make sure that I override this and that the normal attack is playing. So to do this, I'm just going to add the action to our player where we set the animation to ID underscore normal attack. That way we have this ready to go. And you know what? We might actually want to make this to start from the current frame that it left off on. So let's change that to current frame. And the reason for doing this is we're really creating our own animator. That's what these variables are. We need Construct2 to cycle through this because this is a sensitive thing. This is a melee attack that has to get played. And I'll talk about the bug I was running into when I was doing it before. So what we're going to do, now that we have our normal attack anims variable in our game event, we're going to add the action into our entities player. We're going to set the frame to equal it. So we're going to say normal attack anims and hit OK. So by setting this animation frame to normal attack anims, we are effectively setting it to zero because that's what normal attack anims equals. And that's the whole point. By doing this, we're able to get super control over our animations. Are there other ways of doing this? Of course. But I hope this way is very easy for you to understand. So what we're going to do now is we're pretty much going to nest a whole lot of stuff and we're going to be able to nest every single frame and there are currently four. So I'm going to take this and hit B on the keyboard to make a blank sub event and I'm going to double click on it to add a condition to it. I'm going to go to system and type in every. Now we have our every tick which we don't need and we have our every x seconds which we do need. So I'm going to double click on that and I'm going to say 0 0.2 milliseconds and hit OK there. So this is going to run if this is true every 0 0.2 milliseconds. And what I want it to do is I want it to add one to normal attack animation. So that's going to cycle through at its own rate our animation. So let's say system add to, double click on that. We're gonna add to our normal attack animations, add one. 
just like that. So that's going to add one frame every 0.2 seconds. And now it's up to us to control the frames and what happens on the frame. So let's add an event. Let's go to our entities player, object player, and let's compare the frame. Let's see if frame equals two. So we're gonna let one play, then we're gonna stop at two. And at two, this is where I'm gonna hit Q to write a comment because we're gonna come back to this. This is where we're going to call our screen shake and any particles that we want to spawn. That's what's gonna happen on animation frame two. We're also, let's actually add another comment here, or let's, let's see, yeah, let's add another comment. We're also going to be triggering our sound, which we can do now. So triggering sound and checking for overlap with enemy. So there's going to be a lot of things that happen in animation frame two, and some of them we can't set up at the moment, but we'll, we'll get it to work where we need it to be. So what we're going to do here is we're going to, we can add our sound now, we might as well. So what we're going to do is hit B on the keyboard here, and we're going to double click, go to system, and we're gonna type in trigger once while true. So this is only, and it says it right here, this is only going to be triggered when it first becomes true. So let's double click on that. And now we have our trigger once. And what we're going to trigger here is our audio. So let's go down to our SFX. Let's right click and import sounds. And let me go to our folder here again. And let's go to our fighting game. And let's go to our assets. No, fighting game, where is it? I found it, fighting game assets. Let's go to sounds, which is not in here. Dun, 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 dun. Hold on, I found it, don't worry. Actually. Okay, here they are. So we have our sounds here. We never really went over our sounds or imported them in the beginning, but there's not many sounds here, so we might as well import them now. So let me again right click import, and I have to find this again because it wasn't there before. So let me open all these sounds and import and hit OK. Cool. So now we have these sounds ready to go and you can download them. You probably already have them, so no worries there. But now we have all of our sounds and we can start to organize them and it doesn't really matter here. They should be pretty understandable. What we're going to trigger once is we're going to go into our actions. We're going to go to plugins, audio, and we're going to hit play and we're just going to play our normal attack. And it's not gonna loop, and we don't need to give it a tag or anything like that. We could technically lower the decibel level, but I think we are fine there. So we have other enemy stuff that we're going to do, but for right now, we're gonna leave animation two there. We're gonna copy and paste it and double click and call it to three. And we gotta get rid of our sub event that we just created there. And now we have our animation code for animation frame three. So when it hits animation frame three, and actually this needs to be, no, this is correct because it's confusing. There's four frames of animation, but remember it counts at zero. So zero, one, two, three is what it stops on. So what we need to do here is a few things. We have a lot of different uh, ways to handle this, but what we're going to do is we're going to add our action to our player to actually stop the animation altogether. So we're just gonna put a stop in there. Let me zoom in closer. And then we have a few more actions to add, so hang in there. What we're going to do is we're going to completely disable our player from moving. So the first thing I wanna do here is I wanna turn off our speed. So let's go entities, player, object player, and let's set our max speed to zero and hit okay. Then what I wanna do is I wanna disable all of our controls. I want to save, disable our gamepad and our keyboard. So to do this, let's go to our gamepad input. See, we call the gamepad movement and our keyboard movement we called keyboard movement. So let's go to our normal attack. Let's add the action to system. And what we want to do is we want to type in group, set group active. And we want to type in gamepad movement. And we want to change the state from being activated to deactivated. Then we wanna copy and paste this and call this our keyboard movement. And we wanna deactivate that as well. So now, not only do we have no speed, but we have no controls whatsoever. And we're going to have no controls for system wait 0.5 seconds. Then we're going to copy these, control C, control V, and we're going to set them to activated. So now we have that back. 
and then we also have to set back our max speed so let's go to our player and let's look at what our speed is here just so we know it's at 100 so let's control and drag that down and let's put this to 100 so now we have everything back to the way it was we're disabling everything and then we're waiting half a second to reactivate them so that should be pretty good but now we have to set two more things and then we should be finished what we need to do is we need to set attacking to false and set our attack animations back to zero so here's how we're going to do that we're going to go entities player and we're going to set the boolean of attacking to false because now we are done attacking then what we want to do here is we want to set our global variable normal attack anims to zero so let's go add action system and we want to set the value of normal attack anims back to zero so this resets and it won't go to frame uh, number four which it doesn't have or number five six seven eight it won't look for those frames because it doesn't exist okay so that should be pretty good we need to add in two more things here though and we can start to group this together let me zoom out so we can see what's going on here we can start to group in a bit here we can probably call these all of our frames but it doesn't really matter at the moment let's double click and let's add some new actions here let's go entities player and we want to check to see if we're not attacking so that's what we really want to know is the boolean vari vari uh, variable set attacking and then we're going to right click and hit invert because if we're not attacking and it doesn't get triggered what we want to do even if we were supposed to be attacking but maybe we stopped maybe we let go we want to set our state back to idle and this is where our animation state is going to come back in so we're going to add the action entities player to set the value of our state back to idle just like that so now we have let go of control back to our animation state and it should be working now our final thing that we want to do here is if our animation does finish if our animation does finish playing so it should finish playing once it gets here it's going to be finished playing because we're going to set it back to zero there is actually a trigger for that so we're going to add the event for our entities player and we're going to compare on finished so the animation that we want to check finished is id normal attack now this is how we're going to set up our combos if this finishes what's going to happen is we're going to add the action to our player and we're going to set the boolean of combo one to true so now we are giving them a chance at the end of our first animation to actually go and see if they can play the next combo so all of this will make sense soon let me hit save here and you can test it out i'm not sure what working state it's in but it should be, it, it might be in some working state here. Actually, you know what? Before I test it out, I know it won't be because I never added our state to our game event. So let's go here and let's hit N and let's add our normal attack state to our player. Let's put it under there. And now it should maybe work. Let's see how this goes. I'll grab my controller and I'll connect it by hitting A on the keyboard. There it goes, it goes green. And let me hit F because now that's all fixed and hopefully you can see that. And let me exit out. F again. Something is happening with our wonderful sound. It's being triggered. So let me just disable that real fast. And oh, I know why. Because none of this is nested. This needs to be nested in. Let me put this in here. I'll still leave it disabled for now, just in case. But I think it should be pretty good. Hit A on the keyboard and hit start. And if I right trigger, there we go, everything's working. Let me actually disable that and see if that works as well. Let me hit, and all I did was I had to nest it into is attacking there. And let me hit play again. Let me hit F on the keyboard to make it full screen. Let me hit A, press start. And actually, you know what? I'm gonna hit F again, just in case the full screen isn't working and I've been a fool this entire time and I'll make it bigger for you guys. So here we go, we're walking. That's all working still. And if I hit X, we attack and we play our sound just like that now i said earlier i was going to talk about the bug that i was encountering and the reason why we had to do it this way is because if you're just using a pressed event it'll actually not play the full animation because when you're pressing it's only going to trigger the animation but it won't stick so every time i would do it it would stop at frame two and get stuck and i was so confused as to why so I had to create our own kind of animator here for this to play. 
I hope you learned a lot from this lecture. I hope a lot of this is making more sense now. This is definitely on the harder side of Construct 2, but I think once you get, get the idea of it and you grasp just how everything is working and how I've set everything up, I hope that this is a lot easier to understand. If you do have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me or comment in the discussions and I will always get back to you. So thanks for watching this lecture and I'll see you in the next one.